Besides energy stocks, just one sector has protected you from the stock market crash this year better than any other. Stocks in the consumer staple sector are down just 1% versus a 15% crash in the broader market. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with an update to the official Bowtie Index, ticker BOWT, and stocks in that consumer staple sector that will not only protect your money but also put cash in your pocket. The three stocks I'll highlight are three of my favorite among hundreds in this sector and your best opportunity for upside returns and dividends. If you want to see all the stocks in this index, go to the stock card and to the idea center here. Click on indexes and you'll find the bowtie index. From there, you'll be able to see the methodology we're using to pick stocks, some videos detailing it, and some great ways to contribute your own ideas along with all the stocks in the index. Don't forget to follow the index to get early access to videos and be the first to see when I add to the group. If you do sign up for Stock Card, use the promo code BOWTIENATION, that's all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. We start our list of stocks with a safety play in Archer Daniels Midland Company, ticker ADM, and it's a lock on the seed and commodity processing business. In fact, ADM goes well beyond its roots in processing to touch on the entire supply chain for crop storage, transportation, processing, and nutrition. The ever-growing demand for food in the world puts Archer Daniels at the forefront of the Staples companies. ADM uses its size to drive that competitive advantage with more than 800 facilities serving 200 plus countries and 85 billion in annual revenue. The company is a blue chip stock that will grow along with the world's population. But that doesn't mean that the shares are going to make you rich. Revenue growth over the last three years has been an industry beating 14.8%, but it's definitely not a growth stock. The company has been able to grow its dividend by 3.6% a year over the last five years and does pay a 1.7% yield. It's been that share repurchase program though that has been the biggest boost to them past. You see here in the chart on the right, the company ramped up its buyback program to fund $5 billion in shares over the four years through 2017. With the dividend amounting to a payout ratio of just 21% of earnings, the company has plenty of excess cash flow and I think a renewal of that share buyback program could boost the stock price. Shares are valued at just 0.6 times sales, well under the 1.1 times average valuation for peers, so already cheap on that basis as well. Overall, ADM is just one of my favorite sleep at night stocks for its steady growth and that dividend payout. And we're just getting started, but I want to make sure you know what we're looking for here in the consumer staple stocks. Remember, consumer staples are one of the 11 sectors of the economy, broad groups of companies serving that common purpose. The companies in each sector, like technology, industrials, energy, and staples, react similarly to economic forces like interest rates, inflation, and growth. That means starting your stock search at that sector level can really help you pick the stocks with the bigger picture trends in their favor. And the consumer staples have definitely had that bigger picture in their favor this year. We can see here on the spider sector tracker how stocks in each group have done. And if we change the time period to just year to date, we see that only the energy sector has beaten the staples on returns. In fact, with a loss of just 1.18% on the year, the stocks in the consumer staples have beaten the broader market by more than 14%, really protecting your money. You can click on the sector, and looking here on the right, you can see stocks in the sector, including food processors like General Mills and Campbell Soup. You see household product companies like Kimberly Clark and Procter Gamble, and even these vice stocks in the tobacco and alcohol industries. The reason why these stocks have done so well this year is because these are all products that people need to buy. Even those vices like tobacco, people don't pull back on purchasing quite as much when a recession hits. And that means stable cash flows and stocks that are always going to protect your portfolio. We're getting right back to our list, but two extremely important measures I always watch for in these consumer staple stocks is sales growth versus peers and the company's gross margin. First, that sales growth. Since these industries like household products and food processing are very mature industries, seeing, seeing only small market growth a year along with the population growth, Finding a company that can grow sales faster than peers means it's probably got some kind of a competitive advantage that, that's helping it gain that market share. In a slow growth market like consumer staples, even an extra percentage control on the market share can mean a huge difference in those returns. And gross margin is extremely important in the consumer staples, more so than probably any other sector. Now remember, the gross margin is the percentage of sales left over after paying suppliers and some of the production costs. And you find it by dividing the gross income by total revenue on the income statement. Now, why this is important is because it can help point to a brand advantage for the company. A company with a gross margin or that gross profitability well above its peers likely has some kind of pricing power over its customers, enabling it to charge premium prices by, just by virtue of that strong brand name. 
in a market like households products and food where there's really little that differentiates products. Having that brand strength with the consumers is a gold mine. Tyson Foods, ticker TSN, is one of my favorites in this consumer staple space. Now, the company is a leader in food proteins, producing 20% of all the beef, pork, and chicken processed in the United States. It combines this size with a strong brand to control the number one or number two spot in most of its product lines and sells in 140 countries. You see here, most retail food companies have seen a decline in volume over the past year with, with the industry selling 1.6% less on volume and seeing just 2% growth annualized over the last three. Tyson has actually been gaining market share though, with a 0.5% growth on volume in the last year and 10% annually over the last three. And with that global population growth of about 1% a year through 2030, protein consumption is already a $95 billion industry. And with that rising middle class eating more meat worldwide, Tyson is just using its scale to grow. You put all of this together and Tyson has been able to boost revenue by 23% over the last year, nearly twice the 13% average growth among its peers. Not only is Tyson growing sales faster than peers though, but it's also more efficient with an operating margin of 8.3% versus that peer average of 5.5 over the last year. Now like ADM, Tyson isn't a stock that's gonna make you rich. Probably none of these consumer staple stocks are, but, but it is a cash flow machine with a 2.7% dividend yield and growing that payout by 9% annually over the past five years. The business is gonna grow smoothly along with population and meat consumption and, and Tyson shareholders will be there all along for the ride. We've still got that last stock to highlight, one with a 24% upside to the average analyst price target. But if you're new to the channel, I wanna explain our new index here. The Bowtie Index is the top 10% of the large cap stock market, the best one in 10 stocks among the 500 largest companies based in the United States. Now, I explained how I'm finding stocks for this index in our first videos, a unique quantitative and qualitative process that finds us the best of breed companies in each sector. On back-tested results, the index has outperformed the largest 500 companies in the US by more than 50% over the last five years. So check out the videos. I'm gonna link in the description to see how we're doing this. Even among the safety of the consumer staples, you can find some stocks with a little more risk and upside potential. For that, I'm adding Estee Lauder Company's ticker EL to the index on that rebound potential after this year's sell-off. Estee Lauder is the second largest by market share in the global premium beauty market with over 25 brands sold in 150 countries. Estee controls 13.2% of the market, closely behind L'Oreal with 16% and nearly twice as much as the next largest competitor, LVMH, with just 7% of the market. Estee has some of the most recognizable brands in its category and a number one or number two market spot in 40 countries. That gives it strong pricing power for higher profitability because that, that premium makeup category isn't as affected by off-brands or inflation as we see in a lot of the other consumer goods sector. Uh, customers are paying for quality and the brand. They, they aren't likely to switch just because of the price. And despite a sharp drop in the shares this year, the fundamentals look great for this stock. Sales growth over the past three years is 11.4%, is more than double the industry average, and the company's gross margin beats the industry average by nearly 15% pointing to that strong pricing power for its premium products. More than a quarter of the sales are now from that e-commerce channel, and I think this is where there's a lot of untapped growth here as live online shopping becomes more popular in social media. This is one of the biggest trends in China, and businesses are trying to bring it here to the US, and the idea is custom made for the beauty industry. That combined with a strong opportunity in emerging markets where Estee is just building out its leadership in China, India, and Brazil, gives this stock some good long-term growth catalysts. And where the analyst price targets didn't leave much room for those other two stocks, the average target for shares of Estee Lauder at $272 each is more than 24% above the current price for that upside along with that safety stock status. There are more than 1,100 tech stocks traded in the United States markets. Click on the video to the right for the seven that made it into the Bowtie Index, just seven stocks for growth and returns. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.